House in 24 hours. That's not bad. Actually. And I, I want to start by saying that Noreen was unbelievable. She was calling and calling. She definitely loves you, let me put it that way. But she was calling and she wanted you out. And it was, she was not playing games, right? And we're very proud of you, Noreen. Thank you very much. And you are very, very special to all of us. And you know, we have some of our great leaders right here. You know Jane, you know Cindy, you know Richard, you know Tom, you know Patrick, you know Mark, and all of these people, and right back here, the whole group of people, they fought so hard for you. They wanted you out. And again, uh, we've been negotiating long and hard. Uh, we do not pay ransom in this country, at least any longer. We won't pay ransom. Otherwise, you have big problems and lots of things will happen, and lots of bad things will happen. But I still, I want to thank uh, President Erdogan. We've been dealing, and we actually, until this, we had a very good relationship. I was actually very surprised that we didn't work this out a couple of months ago. But it started in a different administration, and they were not going to work out anything. And uh, we uh, took it over, we inherited it, and we have, I think, at this moment, gotten 19 different people out of various countries that were being held. Uh, Chairman Kim was really great to us. I think that started the relationship that we have now in North Korea with three hostages, as you know. Uh, Egypt, uh, we had uh, Aya. Aya was, they said, a spy. She was sentenced to 25 years. They told President Obama, we will not let her out under any circumstances. And they told me she'll be in the Oval Office in 24 hours. We all know that. You guys worked on that one, too and many others, many others. So I just want to congratulate you because you have galvanized this country. There's so much, I mean, you just take a look at this. There's so much interest and it's your faith. It's your strength, what you've done, gone through. I know what you've gone through. Uh, and I also know that a period of time ago, we were able to get you from prison to the house. And again, I do have to say, it's not an easy situation for Turkey either. They had a lot of difficult situations going on. And I do want to thank President Erdogan for making this possible. You understand what I mean by that? Yes. Wasn't easy and wasn't easy for him. Most importantly, I want to congratulate you and your family. I'd love to say a few words. You may want to thank all of these great leaders because uh, they were really calling me a lot. They called me too much. I said, okay, I know, we're working on it, right? But uh, they are terrific fans of yours. And right now, the whole world is a fan of yours. The whole world is your fan and your family's fan. So maybe you could say a few words, introduce your family, and uh, it's a great honor to have you back home. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, this is my daughter, Jacqueline, my son, Blaze, uh, Jacqueline's husband, Kevin, and uh, my oldest son, Jordan. And this is Neil, who's uh, Noreen's brother. And of course, Noreen is my wife. And, uh, <laughs> and we especially want to thank the administration. You really fought for us, uh, unusually so. For, from the time uh, you took office, I know that you've been engaged. And Secretary of State Pompeo also was very engaged and fought for us. And uh, Vice President Pence, uh, we're very grateful, uh, Mr. Bolton. Uh, there are a number of people in, in the Senate, uh, and I can't mention everyone, but I know that my uh, Senator Tillis visited me in prison. Uh, so did uh, Senator Shaheen and Senator Graham, and uh, Senator Lankford has been involved from the very beginning. So we're so grateful to so many people in Congress who stood with us and who, who prayed for us and who, who fought for us. So we want to thank you all very much. And, and I do have to say, we did leave out Many people in the Senate, many people in the House. You know that, Patrick. Uh, many people have been left out. And we just can't go through all of the names. But it was everybody that wanted this to happen. It was really everybody. The complete Senate. I think we can probably say, Richard, this was bipartisan. Do you agree? This wasn't just Republican, right? But honestly, I think if there was ever a bipartisan 
event, this was it. Uh, and I do have to thank Vice President Pence. Uh, he's doing a terrific job. He felt very, very strongly about this. And Secretary of State Pompeo. Uh, he, I would say we spoke about this at least <laughs> once a day. Yes, sir. We thought we had it done two months ago. Sometimes it doesn't always work out, but that's I can only tell you that's better than anybody else could have done. And we are so honored to have you. And anything final you'd like to say? And then you're going to go and relax and go home and celebrate and have a great life, right? I won't ask you whether or not you're going back to Turkey. I won't ask that question. We do love Turkey. We were there for 25 years, and we love the Turkish people. Great. And that's very nice. Yes. We pray for their blessing. That's, that's very sincere. Nice. That's very that's nice. Very and sincere. I know you do love the Turkish people. They're great people. I know that. They're great people. We would like to pray for you. We pray for you often. Thank you. Uh, as a family, my wife and I pray for you. Thank you. Well, I need yeah. it probably more than anybody in this room. <laughs> so I would, that would be very nice. Thank you. Could we pray for you? Yes, thank you very much. Okay. Noreen, what? Yes. Okay. Okay. So you can. Okay. Just do it for you. Okay. Thank you. Lord God, I ask that you pour out your Holy Spirit on President Trump, that you give him supernatural wisdom to accomplish all the plans you have for this country and for him. I ask that you give him wisdom on how to lead this country into righteousness. I ask that you give him perseverance and endurance and courage to stand for truth. I ask that you protect them from slander, from enemies, from those who would undermine. I ask that you make him a great blessing to this country. Fill him with your wisdom and strength and perseverance. And we bless him. May he be a great blessing to our country. In Jesus' name, we bless you. Amen. Amen. And I, you. I just want to pray that the spirit of the Lord would rest on the president the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. Amen. Thank you very much, Karen. Could I ask you one question? Who did you vote for? <laughs> <laughs> I knew the answer. I, I knew the answer. I would like to say I, I sent in an absentee ballot from prison. <laughs> It's a little unfair. I knew the answer. I would never do that to myself. That could be, that could be too tough. Listen, congratulations. Thank you, so thank you. Great parents and fantastic children. They were so thank with you. you, and it is an honor. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thank you. And again, to President Erdogan, thank you very much. To the people of Turkey, thank you very much. I think this will be a big step in our relationship. Uh, we have had a very harsh relationship over the past number of months because of what was happening. And I'm not going to blame fault. I'm not going to say anything. I'm just saying this is a tremendous step toward having the kind of relationship with Turkey, which can be a great relationship, that I know we're going to have. So thank you very much. And, President, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Would you like to have? Can you tell us a little bit about what your next plans are? What do you plan on doing now that you're back safely? I we want to spend time with our children, especially, and then take some time to pray and see what God wants for the next uh, part of our lives. Would you be willing to discuss what your treatment was like while you were over there? What was your experience in general while you were detained? I, I, I think we'll do that in the, in the future. We will probably be doing some interviews. Uh, right now, we just want to especially, this is a time to, to thank the administration and, and people in government who supported us. And that's especially what we want to emphasize, is our gratefulness to say we, we love this country. Uh, last night, we arrived in Germany on a, on a plane that President Trump sent uh, to take us from Turkey. And the ambassador to Germany met us there at 1.30 in the morning. I couldn't believe it. And he had an American flag to give us that had flown over the embassy in Berlin. And I took it, and I very naturally just, I kissed it. I'm, I love this country, and we pray for this country. Phil? Mr. President, a question for you, sir. What do you owe the timing uh, of Pastor Brunson's release? And do you think the disappearance and possible murder of Jamal Khashoggi has anything to do with the timing? The timing is a strict coincidence. It really is. It's sort of, I've heard a couple of people say, well, that's, 
pretty tricky. Could there be anything to it? No. Actually, Phil, no. Uh, it's a total coincidence. It's uh, interesting. A lot of things happening in a certain part of the world. You know that. You know what else is going on. But there are probably things beyond that. But no, it's a strict coincidence, Phil. And I know we're here uh, to celebrate Pastor Brown. Yeah. But if I could just follow up on something you said on 60 Minutes. Feeling or no what you well, you, 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 suggested, you suggested, sir, that there could be serious uh, repercussions for Saudi Arabia if the U.S. determines that they killed Jamal Khashoggi. What, are, what do you have in mind? What's the well, we'll be sitting together with all of the folks here and a lot more, and we'll have to make a determination. I do think this, that I worked very hard to get the order for the military. It's $110 billion. I believe it's the largest order ever made. It's 450,000 jobs. It's the best equipment in the world. But if they don't buy it from us, they're going to buy it from Russia, or they're going to buy it from China, or they're going to buy it from other countries. But Russia and China wanted it very badly. I got 100 percent, almost 100 percent of their order. And I would, from the standpoint of jobs, economic development, a lot of other reasons, I would like to do something where we could maybe uh, Look at other things, I will tell the senators, because that's a tremendous order for our companies. It's a tremendous uh, order for, really, from an economic development standpoint. You look at Texas has a big chunk of it. Almost all of our states are involved in that order. So I actually think we'd be punishing ourselves if we did that. There are other things we can do that are very, very powerful, very strong, and we'll do that. Now, as of this moment, nobody knows what happened, as of this moment. Uh, we're looking into it very seriously. Uh, Turkey is looking into it uh, at a very high level, at the highest level. And so is Saudi Arabia. I mean, they're going to get back, and they have been getting back. And I know Mike's been dealing with them. John's been dealing with them. Uh, but in terms of the order of $110 billion, think of that, $110 billion, all they're going to do is give it to other countries. And I think that would be very foolish for our country. But there are other things we can do that will be very severe. What's an example, so, what, what's an example of something you could do? What's an example of something? Well, there are many things we could do. Would you like to speak up about that, James? you have any uh, suggestions? There are many, many things. I don't know if you want to, you know, I don't want to put you on the spot, but if, if you guys would like to uh, tell them some of the many things we can do, there's a big list. Yeah, there's, there's a big list. Obviously, we have a long-standing partnership with Saudi Arabia in a lot of areas. Uh, my, my first preference, though, is not talk about what we would do, Let's find out what did happen That's first. That's a very good idea. And uh, the, the key thing is he's still, his fiance is still waiting to be able to find out what happens. And there's a lot of speculation. But until we know, I hate to take the next step yeah. on it and uh, just to be able to see. Mr. President, would you meet with his family the in the Oval Office? Yes, I would. In fact, we've invited his fiance. We've invited her. So uh, she actually wrote a letter to myself and the First Lady and a beautiful letter. and. We have invited her, and I believe they're working it out where she'll be coming. I mean, I'd love to have her. Great news where it wouldn't even be necessary, but at this point, it's looking like it's looking like uh, he perhaps won't be or isn't around, and that's very sad. I think we would have known by now. That was our first hope. Our first hope was that he was not killed, uh, but maybe that's uh, not looking is not looking too good, right? There's from what we're hearing. A lot still to learn, I think, Mr. But President. there's a lot to learn. There really is, OK? Mr. President, what are the others imprisoned in Turkey, the other U.S. citizens, three employees of U.S. consulates in yeah, Turkey? What efforts are being made we're to... Working, as you speak, we are working on that. And by the way, and by the way, other people that are in prisons in other countries other than Turkey, we have other people that have been there for many years. We've done very well. We actually have at least 18, and the 18 were people that they said would never, ever be freed. And by the way, Pastor Brunson was one of them. Uh, we were talking before. How many years was it? You can say that number you told me. It's a very scary number. Well, they wanted 35 years. He, they, they wanted him in jail for 35 years. So, um, you know, we have many people throughout the world in other countries. And we are working very hard, this group, all of this group, we're working very hard to take care of that situation. Why is there a red line in terms of Saudi behavior that would cause you to reconsider what you're doing? We're going to just see. Why is there a red line in terms of Saudi behavior that would cause you to reconsider what you're doing? We're going to just see what happened. We have to see what happened. As James said, I, it's really best 
to let's determine what happened first. There's plenty of things we can do that are very tough. Let's see what happened first. Have you seen the video or audio recordings that are? Have you seen uh, the video? Mr. President, I've not seen it. I mean, I've, I've heard, we've all heard a lot about the audio. Nobody's seen it yet, so we do want to see it. I guess it's a combination of seeing it and hearing it, and maybe a lot can be. Have you asked uh, yes, we're uh, going to be seeing it very soon. Uh, no, I haven't. I, haven't spoken. I mean, I've spoken to him many times about this, but I haven't called him yet. I will be. I will be. And I'll be ki I will be also calling King Solomon of Saudi Arabia because I think it's appropriate for me to ask him what is going on. Probably uh, tonight or tomorrow. Mr. President, is the still going? Go ahead. Pastor Brown, do you plan to stay in the U.S. now? For a time, we don't, we don't know what's ahead of us. But I would like to say something. Someone asked before about other uh, uh, American prisoners in Turkey. And I know that uh, from dealing with the consulate there, and they've uh, been very involved with us, excellent consulate staff there, and Martin Thoman is here, uh, that uh, they weren't only engaging for me, that they are engaging for everyone there. Uh, so is the, I, I know this just from talking with the consulate staff when they would come to visit me in prison, that they were involved very much in, in uh, advocating for the other prisoners there. And I have to say, uh, with respect to Turkey or Saudi Arabia, when you look at what's going on in Iran and other places, it's really bad. It is really bad. There are a lot of bad things going on in that part of the world, and frankly, in other parts of the world also. Any other questions? Mr. President, what would you do different than other administrations? You said you talked about the 19 people that you've seen, Americans hold a job that you've seen released. What did you do differently than previously? Well, they're tending not to take them. They are tending not to take them out of our administration, and that's good. I like that. And I think I could tell you why, but I won't. But they tend not to take them out of our administration. And you know what? It's going to stay that way, okay? Mr. President, did you watch the interview with the first lady last night? What? Did you watch the interview with the first lady last night? I did. I thought she was fantastic. I thought the first lady was fantastic last night. I hope I do as well on 60 Minutes tomorrow night. <laughs> I doubt I will, but that's okay. Are you still presenting Treasury Secretary Mnuchin to the conference of Riyadh later this month? What do you think about that? Uh, I think we need to continue to evaluate the facts, yeah. and we'll make that decision. As I talked with Secretary Mnuchin about it last night. Uh, we'll be taking a look at it through, us, through the rest of the week. Mr. President, now that the pastor has been released, what is the future for U.S. sanctions on Turkey? Well, we were very tough on Turkey, and we'll take a look. There was absolutely no deal made. Uh, frankly, the only deal, if you could call it a deal, is a psychological one. Uh, we feel much different about Turkey today than we did yesterday. And I think we have a chance of really becoming uh, much closer to Turkey, and maybe even, ha even having a very, very good relationship. We know the people, and as the pastor said, these are incredible people. The people of Turkey are incredible people. And I think we have a chance now to really have a great relationship with Turkey. I hope that happens, okay? Thank you. Richard, would you have anything to say? I'd like to, maybe you and Tom, you work so hard. Richard Burr. Well, we, we, we welcome the pastor back to North Carolina. Yeah. He's been missed, but uh, his work in Turkey, like everywhere else in the world, to um, spread the word of Jesus Christ is absolutely crucial and it's a foundational thing about this this country, the United States, and I think that's why we love it so much. Welcome home. Carolina Blue. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Tom? Oh, uh, Pastor Brunson, you mentioned the uh, state team. I just want to echo that the, uh, the folks on the ground in Turkey, the two times that I was there, were amazing to work with, and they deserve a lot of credit. They, you know how that's many right. times they've met with you in the uh, prison, Thank how you. much time they've spent with Noreen, and we're very proud of them. They've done an extraordinary job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. He doesn't speak good English anymore. <laughs> he forgot English. You spent a lot of time over there. Fantastic. Thank you. Sir. Great job. Patrick? What a special guy. What a special man of Christ. When he comes to the Oval Office, and instead of saying thank you just for your prayers, he says, let me pray for you, Mr. President. What a special statement. Um, and what a special statement about what you've done personally. Uh, as a delegation in North Carolina, we've worked, worked on this uh, 
uh, released for a very long time, but things changed uh, when this administration came in and the direct uh, involvement of sec the Secretary of State and the direct involvement of you, Mr. President, and the Vice President has made all the difference. We're so grateful uh, to see the happy family all back together once again. Thank you, Patrick. That's very nice. Mark? Yeah, uh, Pastor, welcome home. But I think the other thing is you had dozens and dozens of advocates. You had one champion in the President of the United States but he was the answer to millions of prayers that went up on your behalf and the behalf of your family. So thank you for uh, keeping the faith. Thank you for the entire team and praise God for a, a wonderful celebration today. And thank right. you, Mr. Thank President. You. Thank you, Mark, very much. Appreciate it. James, please. Oh, yes. Just Go also ahead. thanks so much to Charge. The two, both that there was a transition time, but both of them were just so wonderful, and we just want to and acknowledge you know them publicly. Before, before James goes, and you know how James has fought for you, I'd like you maybe to say something on behalf of your husband, how great he had, the bravery that he showed, because you know, I you know heard. exactly what was going on. You saw it better than anybody. It, it was hard for him, and really the Lord pulled him through. Yeah, yeah. I think it was a great testimony in Turkey. Uh, we would like people to know who we really are there, that we really are there to bless the country. That's our desire. Thank you, Thank you for your bravery and everything else. How about you? I just want to say thank you for all of your involvement. I, I don't think that we'd be sitting here right now. I don't think that I'd be seeing my parents right now if it were not for your involvement and your strong stance. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. She was um, the face of the family. <laughs> yeah, she was. She was. She's yes. become very famous. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, like, wanted to say, like, thank you for everything that you've done. I know you and the vice president have worked really hard and all of these people. And um, it was really hard, like, my dad being gone. So um, thank you for bringing him back. It was definitely amazing. Well, you've got great parents. It's terrific. It's our honor. And James, maybe we'll close it out with you. I'll just say on behalf of the Vice President, we are so happy, so thrilled. James Langford, go ahead, please. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, you all have both faced incredible risks personally. Uh, your tenacity to be able to stay there uh, by his side throughout this, a great personal risk to yourself uh, through this process has been uh, awe-inspiring uh, for many of us to be able to watch as well. We're incredibly grateful for you all to be able to be home. Uh, we look forward to having a celebration like day like this for other Americans from Turkey that need to come home as well uh, to be able to finish that out. And we look forward to getting all of those uh, individuals resolved as well and back home. Um, but today, we're just incredibly grateful after two very long years uh, for you to be able to be home. And I look forward to hearing your stories about driving through drive throughs and getting a hamburger <laughs> and about going to just hang out and going to your own church and just being able to relax and to be able to be with family. And uh, we're all looking forward to those days of y'all not having to be on the front page of a paper and just being back to being Americans again and, and be able to do this. So welcome home. Thank you, Thank you James. Thank you. 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 Thank you.